Welcome Age of Vintage Society. Most mortals would be intimidated by meeting the actor who played Moses, Judah Ben-Hur and John the Baptist. But Charlton Heston was an extraordinarily genial and accessible gentleman who made you feel comfortable in his presence. How Charlton Heston could have been the President of the United States. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The Inner Demons of Ben-Hur Star Charlton Heston Born John Charles Carter near Evanston, Illinois in 1923, Charlton Heston's values were created partly by childhood loss. His father was a lumber mill operator, Russell Whitford Carter. He was something of a loner as a boy and enjoyed hunting and fishing with his father and reading. When he was 10, his parents divorced and he moved with his mother and her new husband, Chet Heston, to Wilmot, north of Chicago. His stage name derives from his last name and his mother's maiden name, Charlton. It was a double loss for the young Heston. He only saw his father once during his adolescence and never returned to the woods he loved dearly. Family and natural beauty would remain important to him for the rest of his life. Taking drama classes at Winnetka's new Trier High School, he decided he wanted to be an actor after seeing a school production of Twelfth Night. Shakespeare would remain his favourite writer. Heston decided to become an actor after impulsively auditioning for a high school play. His stage experience in high school resulted in a scholarship to Northwestern University. In 1946 he moved to New York City and he made his Broadway debut in Antony and Cleopatra. His interest in acting took a serious turn when he auditioned for a high school play and realised that he was meant to be an actor. Naturally bestowed with acting talent, he won a drama scholarship. After serving in World War II for a couple of years, he began to determinedly work on his acting career. He started appearing on Broadway and soon got noticed for his acting skills as well as his well-built physique and chiselled features. After entering Hollywood, it did not take him long to establish himself as a popular character actor. After serving for the US Army Air Forces, Charlton Heston moved to New York City and lived working as a model for artists along with his wife, Lydia Marie Clark. However, they found opportunity in Asheville, North Carolina and moved there to manage a small theatre. Clark Heston was married to Charlton Heston for 64 years. Hailing from Wisconsin, Clark Heston met Charlton in an acting class at Northwestern University. They married in Asheville, North Carolina in 1944, before he went overseas to serve in World War II. In the mid-50s, the mother of two left acting to pursue another artistic medium, photography. She lived an amazing life, the couple's son, Fraser, commented. Soon thereafter, Heston landed roles in live television productions. He first appeared in a Hollywood film in a starring role in William D'Atel's Dark City. Although he was still relatively unknown, his performance impressed director Cecil B. DeMille, who cast him as the circus manager in The Greatest Show on Earth. The film won the Oscar for Best Picture and Heston received good notices for his performance. The film The President's Lady, based on the presidency of the American President Andrew Jackson, was his next role in 1953. He also played Moses in the epic film The Ten Commandments by the year 1956. This earned him a reputation as one of the icons of all time in the Hollywood industry. This film got the screenplay attention in many countries of the world. More of such iconic roles were to beckon on Charlton and by 1959 getting cast as Judah Ben-Hur in the movie adaptation of Lou Wallace's 1880 classic Ben-Hur was a huge push. His acclaim got a further bounce by roles in the 1966 film Khartoum and the 1968 film Planet of the Apes. He was described as being like a rugged American frontiersman. Perhaps this even-handed quality was the inevitable result of his humble beginnings in the 1940s, 
when Heston was dealing with shoestring budgets, appearing in near amateur productions, tried to make the best of desperate situations. By the time he became a Hollywood star in the 1950s, appearing in several of that era's showiest blockbusters, he'd experienced such a wide range of showbiz hits and misses that he took nothing for granted. He continued to work in theatre and got some roles in television, most notably so with CBS's Studio One. In the 1950s he was noticed by an important film executive in a television version of Wuthering Heights and was offered a Hollywood contract. Cecil B. DeMille's 1956 epic telling of The Ten Commandments has become an Easter holiday tradition, telling the story of the Egyptian Prince Moses as he learns his true heritage as a Hebrew and his divine mission as the deliverer of his people. Cecil B. DeMille picked Charlton Heston for the role of Moses because he bore a resemblance to Michelangelo's statue of Moses in Rome, Italy. Heston's newborn son, Fraser C. Heston, played the infant Moses. DeMille deliberately timed the film of his scenes for when Fraser was about three months old, the age of baby Moses, when his mother put him in the basket on the Nile. Yul Brynner bulked up for the part when Brynner was told that he would be playing opposite Charlton Heston and would be shirtless for a good portion of the movie, he started a rigorous weightlifting program because he didn't want to be physically overshadowed by Heston. No one got an on-screen credit for the voice of God. The voice was used heavily throughout the movie but was modified and mixed with sounds effects, making identification difficult. Some rumours of whose voice was used were Cecil B. DeMille, who directed the epic film as well as Heston. DeMille's publicist and biographer Donald Hain said Heston provided the voice of God at the burning bush, but Hain did the voice of God giving the commandments. The movie has earned its place in film history, winning seven Academy Awards including Best Motion Picture, Best Special Effects, Best Colour Art Direction, Best Cinematography, Best Colour Costume Design, Best Film Editing and Best Sound Recording. Charlton Heston took on some of the most famous roles in Hollywood. He dipped into the world of soap and then he championed the right to bear arms. Yet Heston's role was as much political as it was theatrical. In America, the career path from silver screen to public office has been well trodden. It is not even necessary to be a particularly good actor in the first place to succeed in American politics, as Ronald Reagan showed the world. But if you happen to be a rugged, handsome performer who has done a convincing turn as Moses, a political career is practically yours for the asking. Charlton Heston, therefore, could easily have been Senator Heston or Governor Heston. Instead, most of the population is too young to remember him in any political capacity other than as President of the National Rifle Association, a part he accepted when he was well into his seventies. The first political campaign he is known to have supported was Adlai Stevenson's doomed run for the White House in 1956. President Eisenhower was the nearest real-life equivalent to a Charlton Heston part, but the actor went out campaigning to remove the general from the White House. Part of his motivation was his opposition at the anti-communist witch hunt launched by the Republican Senator Joe McCarthy. Four years later, Heston at least, had the satisfaction of being on the winning side when he backed John F. Kennedy for the presidency. In 1963 he joined a civil rights march on Washington and stood with Martin Luther King on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in the US Capitol. He called King a 20th century Moses. On screen, by this time, Heston's roles had propelled him towards iconic status. Standing six foot three inches high, he was the epitome of the masculine Hollywood actor, bearing his chest for many of his parts. Heston was involved in politics both in and out of Hollywood. From 1966 to 1971, he was president of the Screen Actors Guild, and he later was chairman of the American Film Institute. A vocal supporter of gun rights, he served as a president of the National Rifle Association. 
Heston also was the recipient of various honours, including the Jean Hersholt Humanitarian Award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In addition, he was named a Kennedy Center honoree in 1997. With features chiselled in stone and renowned for playing a long list of historical figures, particularly in biblical epics, the tall, well-built and ruggedly handsome Charlton Heston was one of Hollywood's greatest leading men and remained active in front of movie cameras for over 60 years. As a Hollywood star, he appeared in 100 films over the course of 60 years. He was receiving radiation treatment for prostate cancer. The disease went into remission, but in 2002 he announced that he had symptoms consistent with Alzheimer's disease, saying, I must reconcile courage and surrender in equal measure. Charlton Heston was seen by the world as larger than life. He was known for his chiselled jaw, broad shoulders and resonating voice and, of course, for the roles he played. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Charlton Heston?